everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here. Uh, you're probably gonna hear the wipers driving in a little inclement weather. Uh, but I wanted to take some time while I'm on the way to the gym to speak to you briefly about some uh, developing news uh, that I think is important uh, for us to be aware of. And just kind of talk to you about where we are and where we need to be and some of the things we get caught up on. Um, from what I understand, first day in, uh, Joe Biden signed one of the executive, one of the many executive orders that he signed on his first day uh, was an executive order uh, that stated that public schools should allow transgendered primarily females, uh, people who were born uh, male but have identified as females should be allowed to compete in high school with uh, naturally born females. Uh, a lot of people are reading it for the first time. Uh, it's not anything new. It's not something hidden. It's on mainstream media that he signed it. And my only uh, statement on the matter, in particular to him signing it, is that we should not be surprised. This isn't something he snuck in on us. He specifically told us that he his primary focus was going to be immigrants and the LGBTQ community. And that he was going to take the steps necessary to protect those communities. And he's simply following through on what he said he would do. What does that mean for us? Uh, I mean, it means that we should, if not by now, if we don't know that no one in that office has ever really taken us serious in the sense of truly addressing our needs. Now, they've put up smoke screens and mirrors. They've done a lot of things to give the impression that they're working on our behalf, but we've never come out on top on anything. We've never been out front on any agenda. That's because we were never meant to benefit from what this country does or how this country moves. We were always an instrument of its power and its wealth. And, you know, you'll get a lot of things saying, well, you know, this is going on and that's going on. Any mechanism that is put into play that may benefit blacks, but it also equally benefits all other groups or any other group, especially whites, it's not a benefit. And here's, here's how I'm going to give you a real simple analogy that you should be able to take and get what I'm understanding. People talk about, well, we got this and we got that. Well, let's just say, and for the sake of money, because we, we, we tend to understand uh, the relationship between money and power, at least at some level. So say, for instance, um, whites have a median wealth of 100 million. And we're going to go out and say blacks have uh, a wealth of one million. And so, and, 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 and this may not be the best analogy, but okay, something happens. A policy is put into place that gives everybody a benefit that boosts their net worth, net worth by a million. So now blacks net worth is two million and white's net worth is 101 million now what you have to understand about money and the money power relationship is that it's not how much money you have it's how much money you have in relationship to those who have the most so uh one million versus one million and one or two million versus one million and one there's no power you're not even in the power game so we can't talk about policies that benefit everybody because we simply move up while everybody else is moving up. The gap does narrow. You have to have specific things done, specific policies put in place that primarily impact, positively impact blacks in ways that it doesn't impact others so that we can close the gap, so that we can get closer to being on equal footing. If it doesn't provide that and provide that mechanism, they're playing the sleight of hand game with you. They say, well, look, you got this, you got that, but if they got the same thing I've gotten, the wealth gap has a, has a narrow, the socioeconomic gap has a narrow. And that's the thing that we must be aware of when, when viewing this. My thing is, 
everybody's got their own set of standards and views. I'm not here to tell you what your values, interests, and principles should be set at. But if you're pro-black, you have to look at things from a pro-black perspective. If, if he is talking about legalizing 11 million illegal immigrants, which gives them direct access to jobs without interference and other benefits, and there's only so many jobs and so much access. So if it's being given to an additional 11 million, and that's an estimation. Where is it coming from? Where is it being taken from? Who's going to suffer from it? Who's going to be negatively impacted? You know, it's not like we've got a surplus of 11 million jobs floating around. So, you know, and I'm pretty sure most of those are people are already working. So it's not as uh, emphatic as that. But you have to understand that in, in front of all that is the idea that they are being addressed and yet those who have suffered the longest and the most in this country are not being addressed our needs, our interests our values, our agendas aren't being addressed we are not getting the attention we need in these areas that's something that we've got to be aware of that's something that we're going to have to be willing to to address among ourselves, to expect the white power structure to address those isn't what I'm talking about. I'm not expecting Joe Biden to do anything other than what Joe Biden is doing. What my focus is, is what we should be doing as a people working together, focusing on the things that really truly matter in our communities, in our homes. There are so many people suffering. Long before COVID became an issue, black people were suffering. Uh, far too many were living at or below the poverty line. And that's on us to find a way to correct. Yes, we need to apply pressure to officials that say they represent us. We need to apply pressure in every way possible, but we cannot rest our hopes on those who have shown us that they don't have our best interests at heart. I, that's our responsibility. You can never expect somebody to do more for you than you do for yourself. It simply doesn't work that way. So I just want to make it a compliment. Don't, don't be surprised with a number of other things that are going to pop up where you find out that President Biden and his administration are doing things for other people and blacks are nowhere in the mix. We didn't put ourselves in a position to. When we had an opportunity to demand some tangibles or no vote, we fell in line because we bought into the, the narrative of the lesser of two evils, that it's better to have Biden than to have Trump. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, we lose sight. Sometimes we seem like we get it, but we're not able to measure our thinking across spectrums. If you ask the average black person, what do you think about, uh, uh, what do you think about when you hear the word or the phrase career politician? first thing out of most of our our mouths would be corruption. Yet, you elected two po I mean, career politicians and did not make the connection. We don't draw the connections. We don't connect the dots. And so, you know, and you can track the careers of these politicians and they will tell you how they feel about you by how the policies that they've enacted either the activity or inactivity as it pertains to you all of that is a narrative of how they think about you and how they feel about you and what they're willing to do and not willing to do for you and you have to apply the pressure you have to say okay if you're not going to do it you're not getting my vote the idea that you have to give somebody your vote means that the vote doesn't have value because they can demand it you have to have the a willingness to sit up and say, if you don't do what I want you to, you don't get it. And that's where that's where your power with the vote lies. Is it not that you're voting, but that you have the right to sit up and say, if you don't give me what I want, you don't get my vote. And you don't and, and, and we've got to learn that. If something is of value, you don't have to spend it. Matter of fact, you only spend it on that which you see of equal value. They run so much game on us. You, you know, so-and-so died. So many people died. They didn't die for us to spend it foolishly, to just throw it at someone. They didn't die for that. 
So that's what I have for you now. On the way out, don't forget to support uh, the work that we're doing at the Odyssey Project. Whether it's research, whether it's bl uh, black men lead, whether it's restoring ghettos, forgotten daughters, uh, show some love. I'm about to get off of here, uh, right around the corner from the gym, and I'm about to go ahead and do what I do for the day and get back in the office. You guys take a uh, have a great day and a great weekend.